Hi, I'm Adam Seguir and this is ACM. I run the Noise Cartel, which is a specialist PR um, company. We do print, online, radio, TV, and more recently social media and content creation in the world of rock. Um, that can be you know, rock bands, events, sometimes it's brands as well, like we've done some work with Jägermeister on their music programs. Uh, and that's us in a nutshell. In the masterclass today, I spoke about PR, um, mostly trying to give advice about when the right time to do PR is for a band, you know, important not to do it too early, I think, which outlets work for various different projects, every project is different. As I also spoke about the importance and influence of the media, um, how their influence has changed over the years as well. In recent years, uh, I think it's become a lot more reactive rather than proactive. Um, which was a point we touched on. I discussed a couple of campaigns, particularly the Baby Metal campaign that we worked on because that was a, a you know, standout success really for the, for the company. Yeah, they obviously had a big online presence which actually helped me PR it because if I was asking an outlet to do a story on Baby Metal or, or, or do anything on Baby Metal, they know that they'd get loads of traffic. Even if it was coming from Japan, it, it doesn't really matter to them that much. You know, they, they just want to be able to say, oh, they've got lots of traffic to this page or whatever. So, um, so that definitely helped at first. But I think with them, it, you know, they're just so different and so unique that pe people are fascinated and interested by stuff that's new and different, you know. So initially it was not too difficult to get like the right people on board. Um, but I think one of the key things that we had to do first was get Metal Hammer on board because, you know, they're like a trusted, serious metal mag. And if they're saying this is legit, then it, it allows everyone else to take it a bit more seriously. I think, you know, and they got the cover of Metal Hammer. Metal Hammer are not going to put the band on the cover that they don't believe in. And uh, I think having that sort of seal of approval from them allowed me to go to other publications and, and more mainstream publications say look this you know th this isn't just a gimmick this isn't an internet fad this is a, a band that's growing I also spoke about how to promote your band um, through social media you know not just relying on PR as well you know um, talking about how to present yourself you know how to think about every element that, that a band does not just your music um, but you know your imagery, your social media accounts, you know, your videos, everything, like think about everything, you know, I thought that was what, one of the important messages that I wanted to try and get across. I didn't actually choose a career in PR, um, it happened by accident. Uh, I actually recently discovered my New Deal uh, agreement from 1999 where I listed the things that I would like to do in the music industry and I actually put as a last resort working in PR. Um, but I, after working at a record label for 10 years and then deciding to go out on my own, I found that one of the things that people wanted was PR. And so I decided to give it a try and it worked out quite well. Um, and now that is what I do and I do enjoy doing it. And I definitely have noticed my brain thinking more like a PR, you know, I often have to sort of check myself and stop from turning every situation into a PR situation. I would say my top three tips on how to get featured on blogs, uh, they're quite simple and maybe obvious, but I think they're worth repeating. One, be good. Like, if you're not good, you're not really gonna give anyone an incentive to write about you. So even if in your head, your music is fantastic, but you haven't actually managed to capture that in the studio yet. Don't, don't assume that everyone is going to hear what you might be hearing. You know, wait till you've got it right. You know, don't rush out with your first demo and start sending it to blogs. Make sure that you're happy with it. Get some feedback from other people first as well. You know, people who are gonna be honest with you, you know, don't play it to mum, she's probably gonna love it. But you know, people who you trust, who, who you know will tell you if, if it's bad and listen to feedback um, so yeah that that's basically don't don't try too early and second tip would be stand out be different like if you if you it's not even enough to just have a great song lots of people have great songs 
what's different about your band? Think, think about that, you know, like try and emphasize what's unique and special about what you do. My third tip would actually probably be, uh, this might sound paradoxical, but if you want to get featured on blogs, it's good if you're already being featured on blogs. So even if you've got a friend who can set up a blog and write about your band, at least you've got something to say, well, look, this is what these people think. Maybe you might like it too. I think it's fun to think outside the box sometimes when it comes to PR. Um, so we had quite a bit of fun recently with the Body Count album, which is Ice-T's metal band. The first song he released off, off the album is called No Lives Matter. And so what we did in the week before release, um, we hired a company to basically draw chalk outlines that you would see in a 80s detective film, um, you know, like a, of, of a body uh, at various locations around London and put a hashtag, no lives matter. Nothing else, you know, nothing to tie it to the band or anything like that. And, you know, it wasn't a huge, massive viral success, but we did start seeing stuff popping up online and we could see it was creating a discussion and it was quite interesting and fun watching people eventually realize what it was all about. I think the festival scene is really important um, to music. Um, you know, it's sort of like the a big celebration of the live scene, which, you know, in my view is probably the most important part of music. You know, it's certainly the part that I enjoy the most. And, you know, at a festival, it's, it, it, I mean, festivals are great, aren't they? You can see loads of bands without having to go to loads of different gigs. You know, in one weekend, you can watch, you know, 50, 60 bands. Um, and it's also quite nice to see all these not just artists, but also industry. Everyone's there together at the same time. You know, lots of things happen there. You know, relationships are forged or enhanced. Uh, you know, ideas can come. You see cool collaborations on stage that you might not have seen otherwise. Um, and I think it's also a really good reminder of how great the live scene is. And, uh, you know, lots of people will announce their tours at a festival. So it's actually quite a good sort of reminder, like you should go and buy a ticket to this tour because you had so much fun at the festival. My favorite festival is probably Wacken or Wacken as they say in Germany uh, festival. It is, it's like the spiritual home of metal, you know. I mean, I can't, like, I can't overemphasize how metal it is. You can't, if you're, if you're into metal and you arrive at Wacken, you almost feel like kneeling down and kissing the floor. You know, it's, it's, uh, there's, there's, I've not been to another festival like it. I'm, perhaps there are in, uh, somewhere in the world. Um, but yeah, you know, you see so many bands that, in, in Germany, the scene's so different that bands that you might see in a small venue here or like quite low down on the bill at a festival here, you get to see headlining or, or you know, a, a really high slot on a big stage with a huge production and, you know, 80 to 100,000 people watching. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's one of the festivals I really enjoy going to, probably above the others.